the best-selling pedals that were released in 2023. So not pedals mm. that are older than that. Um, and they made a they made a list of 10, 10 of those. And what's interesting is that apparently an ambient reverb makes the number one, which I find <laughs> to be which I find to be interesting because an ambient reverb to me is such a specialized effect that um yeah kind of wondering yeah. how that ended up there <laughs> uh, you're probably uh, maybe not taking into account the worship the worship guys who, who mm. always use like huge rivers and worship right now it's a huge deal in in the states and they 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 play a lot of gigs and you know every week at least yeah and and those guys really really like their gear to be good and especially the rivers so so for me that really kind of makes sense okay interesting yeah I, you're right i hadn't thought about uh, the worship musicians that mm. it's 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 not a big thing in europe though that's the mm. that's the thing you know it's it's no, more no, it's more it, a it's, us thing yeah yeah, yeah. I, I saw a meme uh, some, uh, at, at a point in a, in a forum with uh, a European guy was like, every time I see a, 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 a something about worship, we're like, what's the deal with that? We don't know what it is. <laughs> it's like very, 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 a, a really American thing that uh, for us is a little like foreign, but, but really, really it's a huge deal. Yeah. And in, in, yeah, in the US, that's that, interesting. That is big, yeah. I, I thought that uh, the germanium tumness would have creeped up to like at least number three somewhere in this list, just considering all the hype around that pedal. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah yeah, the Germanium Tumnus. Yeah, yeah. The, the one with the magic diodes that yeah, uh, the magic Josh diodes. Scott was, was <laughs> laughing about uh, and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah. 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 The magic Completely. diodes. Yeah. Um, the magic diodes. They make the tone. What else can do it? Yeah, no, no, it's it's just the diodes. Nothing else does it. <laughs> you know, you, you put a couple of diodes inside the box and that's Michael. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, the circuit is not even that important when you think about it. You could just <laughs> no, put no, the no, diodes no. in. No yeah, circuits, no, 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 no soldering, nothing. You just no, nothing. leave them loose in the box and the magic is there. You know? <laughs> yeah, but it's, it, but yeah, it's yeah, yeah. You, know what's, you know what's interesting? Um, I used to know that kind of stories from the, from the, from the hi-fi world. Because when I yeah. started out in retail oh. here in my hometown, mm -hmm. like two, uh, like a, a block away, we had like a high end hi fi store that, like, oh. none of the none of the the loudspeakers would start at at below two thousand euros. It was super yeah. expensive. And, and the IEC cables start at around two hundred and, and, and yeah, things yeah, too. yeah, yeah. Whoa. But not only that, <laughs> once they made a they made a funny experiment where they just like made a, a black box a black chrome box with one switch that they connected mm -hmm. uh to <laughs> a hi-fi system and they said yeah. uh this thing creates like this makes the sound like more you know in the room in your face it is going to be in more intense exactly <laughs> and they said people oh, wow. in front of it and then the, now listen to, now listen to it and they activate the unit which was just an led nothing yeah. And then people were like, yes, you're right. <laughs> so, so, so that's the equivalent of a producer switch for hi-fi, isn't it? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, when I uh, studied in audio engineering, one of my teacher had this thing. It was just a faceplate that would go in his rack system. <laughs> but like it had knobs and stuff, but it did, it did nothing. And the company that makes it, called it they called it the does fuck all. Okay, the DFA. <laughs> That's what it was called. So Steve would be in the studio and he had all these A&R guys coming in. You know, Steve, I think this needs more bass. And he's like, oh, yeah, more bass. So he oh. would go to the DFA and he would like just just a bit, you know, just crank it a bit. And he goes like that. And the A&R guy's like, yeah, that's <laughs> it, man. It wasn't even plugged in, right? Does Amazing. fuck all. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. I'm like, man, I need that. I need that. That's so yeah. cool. Unbelievable. Um, yeah, moving on on the list, uh, what I see is a lot of the pedals on here were pedals where 
the marketing around it was definitely i mean the marketing around the the germanium tumnus was definitely very good and then if you there are two yeah. mm -hmm. ehx pedals in there the ehx jhs the na nano lizard which was like a recreation of an old unit but then again mm. if jhs involved it seems like every time you know because mm -hmm. the marketing around it is so good it always kind of becomes a hit so uh yeah, yeah. Yeah, very and there's interesting. two signature pedals in there too, right? Yeah, there's the, the Andy the, Timmons and the oh, it's got to deal with the Andes. So yeah. Andy Summers and Andy Timmons. If you want success, guys, you sign someone whose first name is Andy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there you <Yeah>. go. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you don't need anything else. Um, yeah, well, it's the first letter of the alphabet, you know. So you, it's really easy yeah. to find. You know, yeah. it's right at the beginning. Yeah. Uh, everybody who who orders their their artists in their brands by by alphabetical order. <laughs> the the <laughs> yeah, the lazy ones go for the first letter. You know, mm. I like to go for Z. Uh, I'll just that candy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, for the most part, I mean, it's like uh, it's nothing too. I mean, the ODR ten, uh, the Karma ODR ten is a recreation. Um, the Fender Shields Blender is a recreation of an old uh, thing. That, that's that's interesting. The Peterson Strobo Stomp Mini, a simple tuner. Mm -hmm. Who could they? Uh, could uh, how could they beat <laughs> TC Electronics? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, have have you ever guys uh, tuned with a real uh, Peterson Strobe uh, tuner? I find them I to be honest. I find them confusing, but I know that uh, a guitar tech that I know he says like I don't yeah. use anything else. Yeah, mm. uh, it, it, it's, it's a bit of the same for me. Uh, when a, a friend of mine who's a luthier here, he is he's a he's like seventy six or seventy seven years old right now, and he he loves his uh, Peterson Stroke tuner. And, and the first time I, I I tuned with it, I was like, I don't know what's the deal with this. I, I can't even tune. I'm used to, to the typical Boss tuner, uh, something very simple. But the, the truth is, like the, the third time when you're tuning with it, you're like, wow. Uh, this is this gives me so much information and this is so great and i can kind of see the the, the tuner how how it is uh, working so so uh, i have a tc electronics polytune you know like 90 percent of the guys but yeah. uh, if, probably if i were to buy one right now i will go for the for the peterson hmm. interesting interesting hmm. yeah maybe maybe i should give it a try i mean i know that um I know that Chris from uh, uh, from Jupiter Effects, who we spoke to last week, he also swears on the <clears throat> on the on the on the. I don't. I think it's also like a Strobo Stomp, but not the mini version, yeah. the the regular version. Um, I never <clears throat> asked him why, but well, you'll never know. There's um, a yeah. Yeah. There was Please, also a few other tuners that came out in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, the, uh, the, uh, I, not in the last couple of weeks, but also Earth Quaker has released one. Uh, the the one with the okay. with the upper jacks and the and the LCD display. Oh, yeah, uh, Quaker. Was it uh, Earth Quaker or Walrus? Walrus. Walrus. Think, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Walrus was, uh, Audio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it was yeah, them, yeah, yeah. and it I was think. Walrus. Yeah. And I think either Joyo or New X mm -hmm. came out with a, a new tuner as well. So. The, there's a few companies that are like taking the tuner concept and they're throwing like new technologies at it, uh, you know, putting mm. in better buffers and all this stuff. So maybe there's like a resurgence for buffers. Not that I know <laughs> that there was ever a hype for it, but you know, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's interesting. It's also interesting that uh, I'm an electronics engineer. So uh, buffers for guitar pedals are usually what we call a perfect buffer. So literally, it can be improved, but some, somehow they're improving it, and it kind of it it hits me very hard that they're improving a perfect buffer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Mm. Um, yeah, and so here is the other list. That's the list of best-selling pedals overall. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't mm -hmm. include. It's not only the the releases of this year, <coughs> but everything. And it seems like. Uh, it, it, nothing really has changed. Boss DS1 and Boss BD2 seem to be st still <laughs> seem to be like the pedals that are, uh, yeah, changing the owner 
the most because that's that includes new and used sales. So um, and then Keely Compressor Plus, uh, Line Six HX Stomp, Boss Tu Three. There we go, another tuner. Strymon Cloudburst on six overall. There has to be a lot of worship people in the US. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Unbelievable. And um, I can see, uh, it looks like there's only like maybe two fairly new ones or maybe three. Uh, mm -hmm. You have the U, UAFX Dream 65 Reverb Amplifier. I yeah. think oh. those came out in the last few weeks. Yeah. And uh, which one? Well, the Cloud Burst is technically from this year, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. But the rest are like staples, like things that you see constantly, like the Line 6 HX Stomp, the yeah. Proco Rat, uh, even the Digitech Drop has been around for quite a while. So mm -hmm. I, I think those are like more like the meat and potatoes of guitar pedals, like those are sure values. Yeah. But there's a few of them there that snuck in there that are fairly new, and I'm kind of surprised to see them in that list, though. Yeah, same. The, the 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 deal with the Universal Audio, I think they put a huge marketing campaign behind it, and uh, yes. it, it's no wonder that they've sold so much. And also, it's no wonder it is there because uh, for many people, it has been kind of a letdown because they expected it to be more analog, kind of, or more I don't know, less mm. le a little more realistic. Or, for example, the deal with the because I, I have many users uh, that have told me, like, I really noticed the, um, the how do you call it, the, the, the time gap between when you play and when it sounds, the, yeah. the, latency, oh. the latency. I really noticed the latency. So uh, for, for me, uh, it, it, no wonder that that pedal is there. Hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, Universal Audio, they're also a good company when it comes to marketing. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. their marketing not is huge. Yeah, I'm not necessarily a huge fan of their products. I used to own a an, an audio interface from them because I was interested... Back then, I was interested to kind of take the burden, the work burden of my computer and have like all the... Um, especially the plugin processing uh, inside that DSP. Yeah. And I thought like, oh, it was a, might, be a, might be a nice thing. But then I noticed that the thing that, that really bothered me was that the lowest possible latency on these things is huge. I mean, yeah, you have direct yeah. monitor mm -hmm. monitoring and everything, but at some point, uh, what's happening during during when you're recording and what's happening uh, with direct monitoring, at some point there is a gap that's big enough so that like double tracking becomes kind of weird and uneven. You yeah. know, you really notice the the latency. Um, yes. Uh, I, I, I have a friend who has a studio around here and he has a couple of universal audio, uh, well, a couple, of, I, I, probably his entire studio is based around universal audio. And he has really told me that uh, universal audio, uh, despite of, uh, you know, they, they, they claim, and I'm sure that that's the way it is, that the, the audio interface and does the processing and the DSP and everything, but mm -hmm. you really have to have a, a powerful computer for everything to run all right. He just mm, upgraded yes. to one of those last, last generation Mac uh, computers. And he mm. said to me, like, now everything is like glorious sounding. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Until now, I yeah. was like, I, I really yeah. can't find the, the, the deal in between this and a focus, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It has a lot to do with the fact, too, that major studios and people at home don't deal with the same uh, the it's, same issues right yeah so at absolutely. home you're going to have a small laptop and you get yourself something from universal audio and the, you might experience that latency because the big studios they have like the most powerful computer you can think of yeah, so absolutely. they're yeah and they're not and and their workflow is also streamlined mm -hmm. they only have a handful of plugins they're going to use because most of the time they're using outboard uh, outboard gear yeah. We're using tons of plugins into our session. So that means the buffering from both the computer and the audio card is a big issue. So if you cannot like take off all the plugins because your singer wants reverb, wants delays, wants all this compression, but you don't have outboard gear, you only have plugins. 
running that stuff while you're recording can create some major latencies or even sometimes if you're listening to it you can hear yourself with a delay and it's uh, not yeah. necessarily yeah, yeah. something you want no. so <laughs> yeah no not at all um and i would like to close this down with so here's the list of best-selling amps i mean this is only reverb so it's not a representation of the entire market but uh, since it's very international, it's interesting to see <laughs> that the number one selling amp on, on Reverb is the Positive Grid Spark 40, followed by oh. the Boss Katana, followed by the Yamaha THR30, followed by mm -hmm. the Orange Microdark, which is essentially <laughs> all small small home use usage amps, right? Yeah. yeah, it's not like you. Yeah, it's not yeah, like yeah, you yeah. can you can take a positive grid spark and go on stage with it. It's impossible. No, but so yeah. ninety percent of guitar players nowadays, I think, they just play at home, and and, and also I think that uh, we have um, uh, the, the market right now. I, I don't think it changes. I think it has already changed since since COVID. Every mm. uh, there are, there's a lot of people who learn to play guitar, and mm -hmm. they, they they now are buying gear, and and many times yeah. it's gear like this that. It's very portable, very compact, and you know they take them for, from home to their place for the holidays and, and stuff. And if it's portable, it's like they go for it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I I, I fully agree. Um, yeah, and it says yeah, it also says in the key takeaways like convenience and size dominate the best-selling yeah. amps list with portable, lightweight, and digital sound-packed options from Positive Grid, Boss, Yamaha, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, the only thing that I don't know why it's there. Well, I know why it's there, but I, I don't understand it from my personal views. The, the Fender Tone Master, which is essentially like a digital version, <laughs> a digital version of the Deluxe Reverb. And I, I, I know why it's there, because it's super light. It looks like a Deluxe Reverb, but it's super light. And obviously, that makes it very convenient for people who don't want to carry heavy stuff around. But yeah. I've, I've tried it, and I don't think it sounds very good that is my personal opinion only but um <laughs> apparently it seems to be maybe it's another worship thing who knows <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah maybe <laughs> what i'm seeing here that's very interesting is that there's way more consumer amps i call them consumer amps because they're more yeah. like practice stuff as opposed to gigging musicians yeah and the only like there's only a handful of amps in there that represent the gigging uh, musician, but there's a classic that's in there, which is number 16, the Fender Blues Junior. Oh, oh yeah. And that one seems to be in every list, no matter what year you're at. Mm. Yeah. The, which really no surprises me. Yeah. It surprises me that it's still there, considering that list has really morphed into more like the consumer type of mm -hmm. uh, amplifiers. And yeah. you still have like... That one, I see the Mark, I think it's a Mark Tremonti at 14. Yeah, the, so the MT-15. Yeah. yeah, it's probably still borderline gigging, but also home use, because I think that one is, what, 15 watts, perhaps? Yeah, it's 15. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. 15 watts heads. Yeah, and there's yeah. a few bass yeah. amps in uh, in the list as well with uh, the rumbles. There's, there's really nothing above 25 watts or something <laughs> no. no exactly everything no. is very low wattage yeah. either digital or solid state for the most part yeah that's 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 very telling i think of probably where we're going in uh in yeah. the next decade or so yeah nobody's buying anymore those angle power balls that we were uh, buying in the oh. 90s you know Oh shit! <laughs> I am. <laughs> I'll buy them. We're, we're I, old school guys. It seems yeah. the problem. Yeah. The problem with 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 Engel is that the and that again, that's my personal opinion. It has nothing to do with what the market, uh, with the how the market was working. When I was still in retail, we were shit, selling shit tons of Engel amps because you could buy a Fireball with sixty watt. Uh, enough to play in the band and they were selling for 900 yeah. or something so it was like super super yeah. affordable and if you just needed one basic channel and nothing else then you were totally fine but the problem is i always found angle amps to be too harsh too compressed way too compressed <laughs> and um the yeah. last angle amp that i really liked that i actually owned was the savage 120 but the old one 
Oh, um, that's the real deal. <laughs> that is, that, that one is, sounds huge. Yeah. Yeah. It's this one still sounded like it had lots of balls, really. Um, same as yeah. the old, the old Blackmore head, which was mm -hmm. essentially like like some side of some kind of um, kind of modified Marshall, if you wanted to, um, yeah. from the, from yeah. the, from the tone. But yeah, with yeah, I don't know. With Engel, um, they have gone into a direction that I, at some point, they were making acoustic amps, and then they were making pedals, <laughs> and mm -hmm. like all kinds of stuff. And I was like, okay, but why don't you just you know stick with what you do best you know and make it you know make it better or make it more convenient for people or whatever 